it's only 2,000, or <laughs> it would be 2,500. And that is way too many objects to just drag around by yourself. So if we do it in code, then we can just set a variable, and the code will make all those for us. So um, we're going to move this instantiate self prefab over here. I'm just going to keep it simple. So if we do instantiate twice, it will open up two different, or it'll create two different cells from our prefab. So as you can see, there's one and two. However, they're both in the same position. They're both in position zero, zero. So I can move one around, but it's going to start at zero, zero. We don't want them to all be in the same spot. So uh, we're going to do cell prefab. And then, let's see. Get that thing like that. Cell prefab. Now we can also put in the position. So I'll say vector three, zero, zero, zero. And then we need to put in a rotation, which is going to be quaternion.identity. This is just a default value for rotation. It's basically a zero, 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 zero rotation. Um, and then our second one, we can have at zero, zero, one. So we'll be creating two cells. One's going to be at zero, zero, zero. The other's going to be at zero, zero, one. So go ahead and start. Oh, there's a syntax error here. Now I have double parentheses. Okay. Let's try that again. As you can see, we have two cells here. Maybe it's hard to tell that they're separated, but they are. So there's definitely two cells there. Um, but something that we can do here is a for loop. So if you don't know about for loops, I recommend you go look those up. It's spelled F O R four, and it's going to be like this. So once again, I'm not going to be able to explain that because it would take too long. But we're going to do a for loop for i x is less than five. Um, i x, oh, sorry, i x equals zero. Oh no, equals zero. i x is less than five. i x plus plus. And instead of making the instantiate once, we're going to put it inside this loop. So the for loop, just really quickly, it's going to do ix is 1, or ix is 0, ix is 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we're going to make it where um, ix, which is this variable that's going to change from 0, 1, 2, 3, to 4, is the position. So on the first loop, It'll be zero zero zero. Second loop, it'll create another one at one zero zero, etc. etc. Until we get to four zero zero. So if you just press play here, you can see. Oh, and just, oh, okay. So I started and nothing happened, right? It's because I'm not calling this script. So I need to say create grid here. So the game starts and it calls create grid, which is this function. Let's try that again. Let's play. And we get five different cells. As you can see. Um, just, just to make things a little more clear, I'm going to space it out this time. So you can see that there are definitely five. Now, instead of just using a for loop, because we don't want to just make a line or a row, we want to make a grid. So rows and columns. So if we wanted to make columns, let me comment this out, 
we would use the same for loop so we would say i z z and by the way the reason I'm using z instead of uh, y so x and z instead of x and y is because y is up so we let me drag this that back in we had some x and some y being changed and z kept it zero uh, the y is up and down so that doesn't really work for our grid okay um, so now if we do this we should make a column right so a column of five because we have this position being changed now something we can do is a double for loop where we put a for loop inside of another for loop so uh, once again I can't really explain this uh, you're gonna have to look it up but ix is gonna run five times and then for each time ix runs iz is gonna run five times so we'll have something like Zero, 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 one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, one, zero, one, one, etc., etc., where this one is ix and this one's iz. Okay, so we go ahead and try this. Save and then press play. We'll see that we make a five by five grid. Now this isn't really a maze, but it is a grid. Okay, so something else going on right now is all those one, all these cells that we made out of the prefab. Um, they're all named cell clone, and that's not bad, but it's kind of annoying. So we're going to want to change these names to something more intelligent. So um, we're instantiating something, right? So every time we call this, we make one of these cells. Now if I want to store that cell in a variable. I would say var uh, new cell as transform equals oh, equals instantiate um, and the reason I'm making it on a new line is so you can read it. I don't want it to be like where you can't see the whole line. Okay, so we make the new cell. We say new cell, which is the thing we just made. Dot name equals um, parentheses maybe something like ix plus that's plus iz plus. Okay, so um, once again, this may, might not make sense if you don't understand double for loops or for loops, but I will just let the game show what it's going to do. So, as you can see now, This cell at zero zero is named zero zero. This one's named one zero. This one named zero one. One one. Two one. Uh, actually, I think this is not the right way. Hmm. Okay. Well. Yep. So uh, I'm running out of time again. I only have ten minutes for video, and I guess this was a two-part video. But um, this is a good starting place just to create grids using double for loops. So I recommend you, if you haven't already, go ahead and check out for loops on MSDN. And yeah, this is really useful for a lot of other grid things like the extras, friends. So I uh, hope you learned something and come back for part two of the video series.